Mrs. Fernando, Gabrielle McDonald, investigator reporting in. Fernando's voice crackled through the communication device in my office. Ms. McDonald, have you read the briefing I sent you? Yes, I am prepared for the task. Good. Please report down to Prison Block C. Anderson will be waiting for you. Your next person will be Queen Ikoria. You have done well these few years. Don't fail me. I was a bit frightened, but I immediately took up my files and left in haste. This was the opportunity of a lifetime. I never thought I would be going to meet the queen that almost devoured humanity and the whole universe. It's been 50 years, but it's felt like 500. Once I reached down to the block, I saw Anderson standing in front of the many guards posted at the gigantic round door. Anderson smiled at me with his brown hair rolled over his forehead. Hey, so we're talking to the queen today? What's this about? Did she do something that, that we're investigating? This is the first time she's been out of that container in the last seven months, so she might be a little cranky. I mean, so we can talk with her, right? You guys do talk with her. She's... she's not like all the bugs. Oh, her? She speaks fluent English. If you're wondering how, the bugs were able to tap into our comms back during the war. Mines too. That's how they were able to surprise and ambush us all the time. They were able to track down our troops because they were listening in. Or they knew from the memories they ate, literally. Well, that made this easier for me. One of the problems I had as an investigator for the procurement team was communicating with the aliens that we captured and stored here. Some could only be watched in their cages, while others were difficult to talk to because of their strange languages. A riveting clank shook my core when an alien monster bashed into the transparent enclosure along the prison block. The lycostructure plastic merely rebounded like a rubber band and became solid again. That alien was called Everdin. It was one of the few humanoid aliens that could speak our language with some practice. Their red eyes were as deadly as their saber-like finger that crossed the divide of either forearm. We passed them as we walked. A lot of those aliens were either quietly sitting, but stalking us with their eyes, or bashing against the plastic enclosures, hoping to destroy us. All of these creatures, aliens, and living organisms were simply small fries compared to the queen's hive. The Evito hive was an insectoid alien species that we encountered on a planet within the Triangulum Galaxy. It was a long time ago, and none of us considered them a threat. And they weren't supposed to be, initially. They were harmless. They had very fast reproductive qualities, but that was it. They were mere pests. Until they became destructive forces of nature hundreds of years later. What we didn't know back then was that they were learning from us. We brought diseases to their planet. They became hardened from it. We colonized their planet. They studied our technologies. We killed them. They got better at resisting our weapons. All this time, they were evolving and growing right under our noses. They built their ships and machinery out of their own biomatter. The Evito took over those planets and that galaxy swiftly before they set their sights on every last one of our colonies. It was a genocide. And even to this day, Many humans wanted and petitioned for the queen's execution, like how we killed the first queen. Everyone wanted revenge. But cooler heads prevailed. 
If we killed the queen, the hive would just make a new one, as we learned. So Earth's last hope to stop the Evito invasion was to capture the second queen. If we could keep her within a secure compound that could block her hive signal and suppress the relays of her army, then her forces would devolve into chaos. It worked for over 50 years. Now we were about to meet their queen. The next person we met was General Cole, a lanky man that looked so stalwart, even in his army attire. So you're the investigators that will be questioning her? Yes, General Cole. My name's Anderson. This is MacDonald. Do you want to come in with us? No. I'm probably the last person she wants to see, so I'm going to watch from the outside if you don't mind. Of course, MacDonald, let's go. We went past the guards and came into the large room that made me wonder if I was in a stadium. The walls were painted in Vanta Black, but it was likely the paint that suppressed the signal waves of Queen Ikoria. The light's glare reflected off the transparent enclosure. It shined as we watched her sitting inside her cage like some broken-winged bird. This cage was sectioned off in two. One section that held her and the outside section that held the surrounding path that the guards walked. In that cage were chairs and a table that crossed the two cages with an open flap allowing for things to be pushed through. Her eyes were not kind as they stared up at us. She truly looked like a bug shaped in the form of a woman with wings clutched to the metal cuffs around her waist. Her skin was a pasty brown in the blaze of the overhead light. She resembled something between a grasshopper and a locust, with a pronounced maxilla and tightly packed mandibles as her blue eyes followed us. The guards motioned for her to come closer while they moved around the cage. Queen Ikoria sat down and laid her hands down across the flap. A guard snapped into place metal cuffs. She lifted it as if to show it was perfectly in place, and the guard nodded his head in approval. This cage was suspended above the ground, and that ground seemed endless, with its darkness staring back at us. The bridge connecting us to the outer cage was thin, but not too scary. We walked over to it and took our seats. My name is Investigator McDonald, and this is Senior Investigator Anderson. I don't know if you were informed of the reason for the session, but I'm going to keep it short and sweet. The Hive has a new queen, and it's not you. So we're here to discuss this new development and hope that you would help us. She blinked her eyes, then she turned her head. I was trying to read her and get a grasp of what she was thinking, in a way I could understand how the news might have hit her. A new queen took over her hive. They took her throne. My partner probably assumed she would be seeped in envy. But I could not see it on that flat, hard surface. The face of an insect was, well, hard to read. That's when the crackling laughter filled the room. I saw her smile widening from those stretched mandibles and shaking Maxilla. It looked like she didn't believe us. Mi amores, what are you telling me right now? Ain't this a lovely day? There's nothing lovely about it, Queen Ikoria. You seem to be amused. Did you know about it? There was a notable pause. No, but I'm glad you told me. 
Was she thinking about whether she wanted to tell the truth or not? Or was it something more sinister? So, will I be getting my request? What request? Let's focus on my last question, shall we? Mr. Anderson, I told you that I want cheesecake. I told you this one year, two months, three days, six hours, 35 minutes, 21, 22, 20. Twenty-three seconds ago. Anderson smiled sheepishly. I'm glad that you're keeping count. All I have is time. And we don't. The answer is no. Yes, time was of the essence. I decided to flank her to set the tone for this interview. Look, you do realize the hive isn't yours anymore, right? Anderson continued to barrage on her self-esteem. We pretty much have no use for you anymore. We're going to have to capture this new queen and stop her now. She didn't say anything. But her mandibles moved, if that was something to note. But her eyes kept shifting around. What was she thinking? She moved her cuffed wrists and knocked the table with a hard handcuff. The officers fidgeted and glared at her. What's your population now? She wasn't smiling when she asked the question, but I could tell from the way she looked through us. Those were fighting words. I've only heard about the war from faint rumors and haunted reminiscing. My father and mother died in that war. Those accursed Insects destroyed everything. 80% of the galaxy's population was wiped out. We've barely bounced back from those dark days. We're not going to disclose that to you, Queen. But you killed off most of those people, so you should already know the number you killed, at least. Five. Hundred trillion. The way that mandible curved. <laughs> she was smiling this time. Yeah, you're off by one hundred trillion. What can I say, little cherry? It's been a long time. Can I call you that? Little cherry? It annoyed me. But I decided to play along. We needed her cooperation, and I didn't want to block the possibility of getting her to help us. Of course, do whatever you want. <laughs> I like you. I froze. Anderson decided to break up this budding friendship. You have been quite helpful to us so far. Maybe you can help us bring down this new queen. Why would I even do that? Because I know you. I'm sure you don't want anybody to take your spot. Her eyes flicked up and down as if to measure his constitution. She turned her head away and looked to be contemplative. At least we got her thinking about it. It is known by our scientists and researchers that two queens cannot be born at once, unless the last queen dies. Care to explain how your hive made a new leader? She gave me a knowing glance with those deep blue pearls of the sea that she called eyes. What can I say, I guess? My hive learned to evolve. Something you human beings haven't done in the last four millenniums. I frowned at her counterstab. Still, if I was going to read her, it had to be the eyes. 
her emotion showed there. Eh, you're probably right. Your hive left us in the dust and moved on without you. She didn't look so confident after that. Oh, look, Queen Ikoria, you have no loyalty to them, and they sure do not have any loyalty to you. Those maxillas shivered as her eyes narrowed at Anderson. I'll have you know that the queen that you call me. It's not simply a title. It's what I am. That is my hive. The denial of this woman was strong, but this is only the first step to a better future for all of us. Look, what we're asking is that you help us. You may have lost your hive, but you can take back what's yours. You can help us kill that queen. You can get your revenge. Her eyes seemed so dreamy as the thoughts whirled inside her mind. She seemed harmless for a moment. It only lasted a moment, though. Her eyes narrowed. What is that phrase that you humans use? <laughs> Go to hell? Yes. I think that is the correct phrase. Go to hell. To kill that queen, I have to kill my own people. You may call them insects, but they are my servants. I will not stain my hands to make you feel better. That's disappointing. I would have hoped you were a little bit smarter, my queen. They might kill you. I mean, it's not like we need you. Your arrogance, Mr. Anderson, is amusing to me. Because you assume I'll be here long enough for that to happen. My heart stopped. Anderson smiled and leaned back as he tried to hold in any hint of fear. I guess we'll see, won't we? We came out feeling deflated, and Cole didn't exactly ease the pressure either. She's being very difficult. Don't worry, we'll try to get her to start working with us. I don't need you to try, I need you to get it done. The last war did a number on us, so we didn't recuperate much. This new hive is going to rip us a new behind if we don't find a way to stop them. I already have my troops in the fleet right outside this prison, but if they come here to save her, we're dead. So you better figure out your shit quickly. Do you understand, Mr. Anderson? Anderson gave a sheepish grin and nodded his head a bit too quickly. Yes, we understand, sir. General Cole walked off and left us there, bemused. The interview may have been over, but Anderson and the warden felt like the queen was not going to last long. She would break. It was only a matter of time. For now, we waited. I tried to get my notes together. The days passed without much incident. Queen Ikoria wasn't budging. Even when we met with her, she gave us a firm wall to run into as we tried to negotiate with her unsuccessfully. She was tougher than Anderson assumed. The way I see it, she needed a push. In this place, she was safe, comfortable to some extent, and was watching us sweat right in front of her. She could see it on our faces, the worry and concern that we had for our fellow mankind. Queen Ikoria was getting a lovely performance from us. I was thinking to myself that maybe we should try good cop, bad cop, since she seemed to be interested in me for some unknown reason. That annoyed me because I kind of knew why. The insects saw my niceness as weakness, and I was acutely aware of that. I was going to take advantage of that in time. The prison's alarms blasted. I started to open my eyes, and the alarms got louder. 
alarms blaring, I jumped out of my bed. I ran out of my room and down the hall, hoping to find out what was going on. There are a lot of guards running around. A lot of chaos. The noise was infectious. McDonald! I looked up. She stood there. A gray-haired woman with a face that was as youthful as a bountiful spring. Her eyelashes fluttered as she glared at me. Get to Queen Aquaria's cell and help the guards lock down the area around it. Keep an eye on her. What? 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 What the hell is going on? I can't explain that right now. Just go. I knew something bad had happened. But she gave me enough information to know that the queen was still in her cage. But for how long? The queen made that threat that she wasn't going to be here that long. Was her premonition about to come true? I could only hope I was wrong. Once I got there, the place was suffocated with guards and not just the best ones. They were actual soldiers posted up in different positions around the entrance to her holding place. They must have been under Cole's command. I walked past them after showing them my ID and stepped into the room. One soldier followed me and it was unnerving, but I resolved it up to them being overprotective with everything that was going on right now. Anderson was standing, and his posture did not look too giddy, while Queen Ikoria stared at the table with a bored expression. Other soldiers are lingering around the cage, and their fingers hovered over their triggers earnestly. Anderson? Anderson turned around and blinked his eyes at me, as if he had woken up from a sleepwalking session. What's going on? Did... Did, did she do something to cause the alarms? The hive is attacking. My heart stopped. What? So, so early? In a way, I shouldn't be surprised. But I didn't expect it to happen this quickly. They did not engage with the army. They flew across ten galaxies to get here. This was their first objective. She was the only thing that was on their mind. Don't be so sure about that, Andy. She did not look up from the table. She twiddled her fingers. Anderson spun around and pointed a gun at her. They can't save you if you're dead. I fidgeted. Those maxillas pulled under her eyes in that sickly smile. She glanced up at Anderson. You would think I'd be glad, but I'm very sad that you're about to die. Now, a burst of yellow passed over my shoulder and hits Anderson in the face. Anderson fell to the ground, crying out aloud. I froze as rifles fired bursts of flame and plasma cascading around me in a mix of chaos and rage. My knees buckled and that probably saved my life as I hit the floor. I shook in fear. Cries and screams bellowed throughout the room. And then there was silence. I didn't dare look up. There was some distant screams and yells, but the sound that sent chills up my spine was the crack of the feet that got closer to me. Jesus Christ, I was about to bite the dust. Leave her alone. I like this one. I looked up, and I saw that soldier pulling back his rifle from the back of my head. My head turned to Queen Ikoria. She smiled down at me. Thank you for the cheesecake. It was as simple as that. Unbelievable, this woman. That soldier slid a device onto the Lyco structure plastic. After a second, the plastic glowed white in a growing circle before a hole burned through it. The soldier broke the wrist cuffs and released the queen. She walked on the bridge right past me. 
stopped, then turned to me. You're probably too young to know this, but my bugs love to eat before they move on to their next target. That means you have time to get on an escape pod and get out of here. I'll see you soon. <laughs> She chuckled as the soldier followed her out of her prison and into the light. I laid there, unable to speak and unsure of what to do. The advice she gave me was probably solid, but I was given an order by my boss to watch her and stop her if need be. The stopping part was unspoken, but it was obvious. As much as I wanted to escape and run away, where would I run to? The Evito Hive had returned. There was nowhere to go. They would devour the whole universe soon enough. It sounded like a stupid idea in my mind, but my only option was to stop her and this new queen. I mean, I was going to die anyway, so I might as well die swinging. Pushing myself up, I got on my feet. I went over to Anderson and stared at his face, caved in from the molten skin over his hard bones. He was dead. There's nothing I could do for him now. I clasped my hand over my mouth and held in my scorn. My head whirled a confusing mess of thoughts. Too many echoes vibrated inside me and tried in vain to escape. A resounding screech slipped in and out of my days. I ran out of that place and into a slaughter. All of the guards and soldiers were dead. What the hell happened here? She had traitors within the army, and all this time she knew. No wonder she was so confident. I looked around at the streaks of blood and the disgraceful postures of the bodies with holes in their armor. My eyes caught sight of bloody footmarks leading down a corridor. Yep, that must be the way they went. I ran down the corridor, hoping to see at, at least the back of them. Around me was dead body after dead body. I couldn't even follow the blood anymore. It was hard to discern from the blood marks and footsteps everywhere else. But I never stopped running. That was all I could do. My feet were the only thing that could carry me, and my faith was the only thing that kept my sanity from breaking. Many of them were guards. The injuries were from that soldier's plasma gun. I finally realized I had no gun myself. My naked hands were a crime against myself as a prison investigator, and I should have carried a weapon before I came here, considering the circumstances. I checked the body and took up a pistol and its ammo. Inside of it was a capsule and a pointed end used for liquid insertions. This could put any alien to sleep. It, it wasn't a good weapon against a trained soldier, but it, it should put him down if I get an accurate shot. I kept up the pace and moved through the corridors as swiftly as I could. It was getting harder to follow the bloody foot trail with all this blood splatter. Some of these bodies were not killed by a precise plasma shot. Uh, the, the guard post should be around here. I could pass that place in and get to Block B. Then I came around a corner to end up seeing a four-legged blue fur beast stepping onto the crossroads between me and the other side of the corridor. It glared at me and bared its teeth. 
I froze in shock. The rest of the imprisoned creatures were out as well. This wasn't good, and Ikoria probably had something to do with this. It was probably to cover her escape. I grabbed the gun as the beast started to approach me. Should I fire? May maybe I could scare it. If it was not an apex predator, then I should be able to scare it away. The problem was, I knew nothing about this beast specifically. The beast crawled up to me. I stepped back cautiously. That's when another bigger beast came behind the first one. This one had one eye, yellowish fur with brown stripes that hung down from its lofty muscular frame. I knew that one. And Afino. He was definitely an apex predator. And this one knew me. And also did not like me because I took away his access to the virtual reality portal. It growled in its distorted, whizzy screech with a devious smile. The first beast twitched. But I did not when I pulled my gun and fired the sleeping agent into the face of the Afino. The Afino crashed the first beast into the ground and rushed at me. My heart jumped when the Afino almost hit me, but instead crashed chin first onto the floor. The first beast had bitten into the leg of the Afino and dragged him back. <coughs> I coughed as bile filled my throat. The Ofino waved his head drunkenly around as his eyes drooped. Huh. I almost died. My fingers fidgeted as the drug had its effect on the Ofino. Huh. <sighs> I was alive. <laughs> Another growl woke me up from that reality. The first beast. I reached for the next capsule to reload the gun. The beast ran up the back of the Ofino. Terror gripped my soul and I lost my courage. I immediately dropped the capsules and started running. The floors clanked from the ferocious echo of its claws against the surface. I turned the corner and knew the guard post was just beyond this locked door. My breath choked as I kept up the pace. I grabbed the handle as I jammed my other hand into the button. A beep sounded and the door pulled into the wall. The beast roared. I could not wait any longer and scrambled through a slim opening of the door. Its face bashed into the door, and I fell back just as its claw thrust through the opening, trying to rip into me. I scrambled up and backpedaled into a frightful roll. Metal bars pressed over me before I slammed into a round desk. I blinked my eyes as that beast pushed its paws between the door and the jam. If I stayed here, it would eat my face off. So, I jumped up and threw myself over to the guard post. The beast rushed forward and raved in a vicious snarl. I pulled the crank and dropped the metal fence. The beast crashed into the guard post's metal fence. I stepped back as it roared in my face. <laughs> Whew, my heart skipped a beat. A thousand of them as I stood there, scared stiff. My eyes flicked around the space looking for an escape, but I was surrounded by the guard post's metal shield. The room was a flat square, with metal bars shooting out of the huge architecture of the wider cell block. Yeah, this place would have been a great place to hunker down in, if the initial door locked out this beast. Now, I was stuck in here. This was a cruel development for me, even if I was safe. Looking down from here and through the metal bars, I could see chaos flying all over the prison compound, 20 feet below the guard post's long shaft. There was a huge wave of bodies running around and not all of them were moving. Some were in deep conflict. I saw claws digging into the faces of other aliens. Some aliens seeped in the pools of their reddish bodily fluids. Oh, it was a sickening scene. 
The screech pierced my mind. I turned my head, and claws almost took off my nose. The fu- I pulled back as the beast ripped through the guard post's wall. This wasn't good, but I couldn't escape. My body shivered immensely as the metal squeezed under the power of the monstrous beast. I gasped as my knees lost their strength. Death got closer to me. I was... I was going to die. The beast opened its jaw as it flew at me. Then it stopped as quickly as my breathing. Did time freeze? The beast was violently pulled out. Its arms swirled and flew around in a desperate attempt to stop itself from coming out of the guard post. I gasped in surprise. A flash moved around me as that beast was carried by another, more dangerous fiend. That tall, red-eyed fiend was a Verdun. The Verdun threw the beast off the guard post platform and down the twenty-foot drop into an eventful thud amongst the wild noise below us. I slipped below the counter of the post and hoped the Verdun did not see me. The back of my shirt was grass, and before I could fight it, I was pulled over the edge of it and crashed into the floor. I froze when that Verdun glared at me. Its three fingers were pudgy, but they held a lot of strength thanks to that muscular forearm. The fourth finger curved back from the wrist's edge and sharpened into a vicious scythe that would slice through the thick lubber of an elephant. I tried to push myself away. His foot pressed into my stomach and stopped me cold. His eyes narrowed as his hissing voice echoed. Stay still. Yeah, I swallowed my fear, but it was likely to be vomited out onto his foot. My chest compressed from the weight of the pressure. You're going to get me out of here. I shook my head. His eyes squinted to a dangerous level. What do you mean, no? I held my hands up in surrender. Wait, you don't understand. I, 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 I can't really get you out. I'm just, I'm just a, a clerk worker. I, I, I don't know how to help you or anything like that. I, I'm not a guard. Do I look like I was born yesterday, human? You aren't, but I can't help you. His eyebrows furrowed into a valley. Human, you better start helping me, or I'm going to be the last thing you see. My lips twitched in bemusement. Now what was I supposed to do? I couldn't die here. Not now. I still got to find the queen. Then just go to the escape pods. His foot squeezed into my stomach and I gasped. I don't know where they are, human. That's not where I wanted to go either. I needed to get him to let me go. I said... Well, I don't know where they are either. His hand grasped my hair and pulled me up. My face was now level with his. Do you want to die, human? My hands flashed at his face in rabid shock. Please, I can't help you. You need to let me go. I have to find her. Find who? Queen Ikoria, you... I dropped onto the floor. It was a shock to my system as the pain traveled up my back. I looked up and saw a tense glare, but it wasn't aimed at me. Queen Ikoria, as in the Queen of the Avito? I nodded my head. Yeah. Where is she? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm trying to look for her right now, and but- And I'm coming with you, because I have an axe to grind with that bug. This was not what I was expecting, and my mind was filled with too many conflicting thoughts to- rationalize why he would want to see Queen Ikoria. Then it snapped into existence. The past came to the front as I remembered we weren't the only ones that got brought to extinction by the Yavito Hive. So were the Verdan alien species. Though we were going to the same destination, I didn't feel too comfortable with the idea of bringing him with me. Then again, I didn't feel comfortable with him around me, period. Verdans were cold aliens with little regard for morality compared to the soft hearts of humans. 
I exhaled as I stood up. <sighs> Name? Verdon scowled at me. That matters to you? I mean, I don't exactly want to call you that guy or that alien. At least, make it easier on my brain. His eyes narrowed at me as he glared at me for several seconds. He growled low and stepped to the side. Gunt, walk in front of me and know that if you try anything foolish, I will catch you and break your neck. I'm so thankful that you're such a kind alien. Almost left my lips, but I stowed my sarcasm for now. We ran from that place and down a new corridor. This was the best I could do. It was odd to be running like this, even more, with Gun right behind me. It was an insane development when I came out of the corridor and watched a crowd of alien beasts falling back from a deluge of water hitting them. I moved behind a column and hid myself for dear life. My heart pumped its displeasure. Everything was falling apart. Most of the prison cages were broken into or empty. The guards were obviously putting on the pressure using every tactic they could. But at this rate, we were going to get overrun. I needed to find that damn queen. But where was she? If she was going to escape, she probably would be at the escape pods. So that was probably my best option. The way she talked to me, something told me she would never go near there. Or at least, not yet. Or at all. No. No, she wouldn't go there. That's what would be expected of her. And she never picked me as an idiot. If she's smart, she already had an escape route already planned for somewhere else. Probably at a place that was breached. What are you thinking? I'm trying to figure out how we're going to get past here. I looked around the column and saw the horde of monstrous aliens stumbling over each other like a messy painting. It was a bizarre sight, but I needed to get past them. I looked at the water crashing into the wings of Apollyon. It was the loudest and largest creature there. If I could get behind those wings, I could sneakily run behind it and get to the other side. Um, as far as the other aliens, I just had to hope they didn't notice us. Follow me. I inhaled, gathered some courage, and left the column behind as I ran. My feet slipped on the wet floor, and I skittered behind the bird. I hit the floor like some clumsy fool and slid up to the mouth of a ten-foot cat with three eyes. My right foot lifted up, and I kicked it in the face. It growled, but I used its face as leverage to push me anywhere else except that sharp-toothed mouth. Gunt smacked it into the side, and he pushed aside the blast of water, allowing me some breathing room. My arms waved in half-circles as I slid forward and got up in a tumble. A jet of water hits another alien creature next to me. My leg got slapped with a swash of water, but I kept running. I eventually steadied my running and swung around a column as the streams of water smacked into my side. I was safe, for now. We kept going. The chaotic noises rattled my courage even in this quiet hallway. What did I get myself into? <laughs> Why are you looking for the queen? I turned around and looked at him. Those eyes struck me. A lump grew in my throat. I swore at that moment my soul was being eaten by this fiend with no movement of the mouth to ease my worry. I thought you would have escaped, yet you seek death. I exhaled in exasperation. <laughs> you act like you're the only one with revenge on your mind. His eyes widened momentarily, but swiftly narrowed in disdain. Our people have fought and killed each other many times over. I lost my family to your warriors. Sorry to hear. But, to answer your question, there's nothing left for me outside. Well, there probably will never be anything left for me, even if she dies. What do you mean? So, I told him about the new queen and the situation as it was right now. He said nothing. 
I guess there was not much to say when both of us were backed into a corner. Was this how my father and mother felt? The hopelessness that gripped my own heart, tighter than a vice grip, would fracture my existence into a million pieces. We could only move forward. Our feet slowed as we tried to stay as quiet as possible. These corridors were quieter, but they weren't going to be for long. We went past some bodies and Gunt stopped. I turned around. What is it? He was glaring down at the body of a guard specifically. Then he crouched, reached down, and pulled out a sharp spike from the body. Gunt said, That bitch is close. It took me a while to recognize what that was. That spike was from the queen's body. I remembered seeing it on the lining of her wings. I looked around. We were near the kitchen. My eyes widened. Of course. I knew where she was all right. Okay, hmm. Uh, do you see any weapon on that guard? Gunt searched the belt and shook his head. He paused. Then he took up something from their dead hand. A stabilizer baton. This is useless to me. Leave it then. So we walked down the hall as quietly as we could. Because we didn't exactly want to alert her, but I knew she already predicted I would have pushed that door open. Hey, Cherry. That smile disappeared very quickly, though. Who's your company? Seriously? You're, you're really eating cheesecake right now. Queen Ikoria was seated on the counter of the serving section, with glass containers covering the metal food basins. In her hands were a plate of cheesecake and a fork. Her bodyguard lifted his gun and stopped us cold at the other end of the cafeteria. The only thing between us was one human body, shot up like a machine gun played with it. What? I like cheesecake. You know, sometimes I wonder if you were a human before this. She smiled. No. After I devoured your cities, they became mine. And that means everything in it, including the cheese cakes. I must admit, you human beings make damn good food and drinks too. Red wine is my favorite. Gunt stepped forward, but I gripped his wrist as quickly as the soldier cocked back his gun. Queen Ikoria tilted her head with a smile. Verdans, ah, my favorite species to kill. You have always been interesting to fight. And you're going to be the last person I fight because I'm going to eradicate you. <laughs> Funny. Don't you think it would be in your best interest to let me live? Gunt growled in frustration. I patted his arm. Hey, easy. Listen to Cherry. She's saving your life. You expect me to stand by and watch the bugs come to rescue you? After you annihilated all of my kind? They're not here to save me. They're here to kill me. There was sudden, brief silence in the air. Oh, wait, so the new queen wants you dead. Though I could not send my signals outside of this compound... My presence alone is enough of a threat. She probably found out my location when one of the bugs ate a human's brain. If the humans had any common sense, all they had to do was release me, and any call I give out would be mostly ignored. After all... I am not the queen, but in the long term, 
It could cause confusion. It could disrupt her forces. And she wouldn't want that. She wants complete control. Killing me is simply a logical move. There's no emotion behind it. I wondered if Ikoria harbored any emotions about the situation herself. If she did, she didn't show it. She lost everything. It's not something she would want to acknowledge. Is this why you're not in a hurry to get out of here? Pretty much. The escape pods are pretty much surrounded by General Cole and his predators. Your boss, Fernando, already opened out a path for me. I already know where I'm going to exit, thanks to her hard work. What? Uh, all, all this time? Like, all this time she, she was your mole? How many people are helping you? A fair amount. They were children that have been inseminated by me since the war. Inseminated? She gestured at her soldier friend. Yes, I can inseminate people and make them my servants. It's not so something I can do all the time, but once done, the bug stays dormant within your body until I give you an instruction. That was a wild ability, and no one knew that she had it up until now. <laughs> she probably hid it all this time as, as a trump card. So, what are you going to do? If you escape, they're just going to chase you. She laughed. <laughs> oh, I don't exactly want to die. For now, let's help each other escape this hellhole. And then we'll work out the specifics of what happens after that. Gunt stepped forward. To hell with that. Gunt! Hmm... Let me ask you something. What's better? My death? Or what's left of your puny civilization living? If you kill me, then the new queen will take over. I'm your best hope to kill her. But I'm doing it on my terms. I don't want to work for no stinking human army. If you help me, I will spare both of your people and will only rule over them. I won't destroy them. Deal? Do you expect me to believe that? It's your choice. Gunt's red eyes burned through Queen Ikoria, but he didn't move any further. I think deep down, he knew what the best choice was, and so did I. Both of us were going to hate it. Personally, I wanted to get a much firmer decision on her status with us. That was going to have to wait because, well, I didn't want to die either. I'll do it. I turned to Gunt. Gunt scowled at me and grumbled incoherent noises. I guess that was a yes. That is good, Cherry and Gunt. I like your intelligence. Our next destination is the relay station in this dump. That's a dead end. Not for us. Our escape ship will be waiting for us there. Was I really that intelligent, considering I was working alongside the most dangerous person in the universe? It remained to be seen. 
So we made our way to Block F. There was a mess of paper, glass, and burning plastic all over the floor. All of the cells were empty. There were a few dead bodies just outside of the cells, if not on the long path to our freedom. Fernando, baby, you did good. Gunt and I looked up to see Miss Fernando on the upper stairway. Unbelievable. We walked closer. Queen Ikoria jumped back and gripped the arms of Gunt and me. This is too soon, Queen Ikoria whispered. The soldier suddenly raised his gun and cocked it. Something was wrong. A stream of blood rolled down the side of Fernando's lip. My heart compressed and slowed its pulse. A curved barb spun up and sliced through Fernando's gut. Oh my God. Fernando was hiked up and thrown over the stairs railing. Her body slammed into the ground with not an ounce of grace. That's when I saw the flying bug behind her. It raised, flapping its wings in a vivid beat. Buzzing bugs flew out from behind it. Their barbs at the end of their abdomen flicked up and down in their fury. The armor on their thorax glowed intermittently with their unrealized rage. You gotta be kidding me. Queen Ikoria stood up straight and stared ahead of us as the soldiers got closer to us. Gunt's scythe fingers straightened and were ready to slice into anyone. Ikoria's eyes were deeply focused. Was she trying to communicate with them? They were buzzing with fast beating wings in their levitated state, but they hadn't moved toward us. I swallowed and hoped she could master them. One bug raised higher than the rest of them. It was working. That bug stopped its wings. It turned its body and barreled at us like a drill. Move! Gunt pushed me back. Queen Ikoria and the soldier jumped from the spot where the bug splattered into the floor. With such tremendous force, the concrete cracked. That wasn't what scared us, though. It was the blood, and it splashed out. Thankfully, we avoided much of the wet hazard. But droplets did hit our skin. Ah! It burned hot. The soldier fired, taking down a few bugs, but they started swarming around us. Gunt spun and swung his fourth finger. He cut down several bugs at once. The bug's blood on that sharpened instrument would not harm Gunt, since it was not skin. Their efforts were pointless, for both of them were pushed back. A hand grasped my shoulder, and I was tugged. All of us ran into a 10 by 10 foot cell, trying to make sense of our inadequacy. The soldier fired a full burst while Gunt covered the only exit with his ferocious swipes during the soldier's reload. The whole entrance was filled with their crowded bodies. My ears blew up from the vicious noise that ripped through the air. I couldn't even hear the soldier's gun anymore. My heart slowed to a crawl as my life flashed before my eyes. A sound tickled the back of my neck. I turned around and saw Queen Ikoria's face, twisted into a look I've never seen before. Her maxilla was pointed up, and her mandibles were tilted to the side at a harsh angle. She said something, but, but I couldn't read it. Reading a bug's mandibles isn't as predictable <laughs> as a human's lips. Um, but she, she pushed me into the wall and screeched. The soldier hit the wall... And Gunt took the hint when he glanced back at us. Bugs pushed through the narrow opening. Queen Ikoria spread her wings, and with an extension of the fake hands, spikes fired from the edge of her wings. They struck the bugs in a merciless barrage. Their blood sprayed in a disconcerting display. They kept coming, and she nailed them to the floor. The soldier added the finishing touch as he went outside. I watched her steel-glazed face. She pulled her mandibles to the center, and I wheezed when her arm added too much pressure to my neck. Her arm retracted, and I coughed from the discomfort. <coughs> you okay? 
Her eyelids squeezed into a fierce expression as her maxillas widened far up into her face. Let's go. She walked past me and I followed. We moved along the wall and under the shadow of the upper stairway as we walked from one end of block F to the next section. The roof opened out and led further into the towering confines that besieged us. Hard, transparent pangs separated each section and cut anyone off from the room above it. I could stare up and see the upper blocks of rooms sitting upon this block as if staring down upon them with no mercy. It was like a panopticon from the top. That was our destination. We were close to the communication relay station, but we knew we were walking into a trap. The question was whether we would survive it. Gunt slowed down and pulled me with him. You sure we can survive this? We have to, don't we? Buzzing made Queen Ikoria and the soldier stop near an opening. So did Gunt and I. Almost everyone fell under the might of the bugs. How are we going to pull this off with a useless queen? She wasn't completely hopeless if I thought about it. I jogged up behind her. Queen Ikoria turned to me. This way. We went down a new corridor and slowed as a fury of rays flew across a long floor and into an army of bugs. Bugs crawled towards us. The soldier smartly shut the opening with a sliding door. Bumps grew into its structure as they bashed into it. Hopefully those assailants took out those bugs before they took us out. Queen Ikoria did not move, and neither did the soldier. Was she scared? Her face didn't show it, but as powerful as she was, she could easily be killed if she was careless. Queen Ikoria spun around and pointed at Gunt. Go around and distract those guards. Gunt narrowed his red eyes at her. There was a better way to deal with this. Besides, I needed Gunt in case she betrayed me. I pointed above them. We can use the bar that covers the distance and, and walk over this. The lycostructure plastic should block any sound if we're quiet enough. Queen Ikoria said, Unless they look up, the bugs can still sense me. I rather avoid combat in general. Her mandible squeezed together pretty tight before she glanced up. She pulled out her wings and flew up. I nodded my head at Gunt and reached for the edge on the wall. We climbed to the floor two stories up and made our way to the bar. Queen Ikoria said, We can collect some suits in that office, so you can go outside. Gunt walked briskly across it first, and the plastic cracked immediately in various spots. Specks of plastic flew up like displaced dirt. Queen Ikoria narrowed her eyes. The soldier walked next, and I walked behind him. A distinct tremor in the air made my body shudder. It was like I could not feel anything, and I almost fell over. I threw my arms out and balanced myself. The soldier turned and pointed his gun over my head. Queen Ikoria glanced behind her at a bug. A huge one, with four sets of wings and an angry disposition on that face. The bug stomped toward Queen Ikoria, but she flew up and the bug spilt its mandibles and blew out an oscillating wave that smacked her in the back. The soldier fired into the bug and cut through its arm. That bug fired its shout at us. My spine struck with pain and I doubled over hitting the bar. Everything in my body slacked, except my brain trying to fight the overload of sensory inflammation. I watched Gunt standing there waving at me with the soldier prone and shaking like an epileptic. My view was tilting. Gunt was shouting at me. Why, why couldn't I hear him? Everything was weightless. 
My fingers froze as much as my dying heartbeat. W why couldn't I move my arms? Gunt waved frantically, and all I saw were the passing walls and roof structure around me. The light fixtures blinked at my awaiting fall from grace. Oh, God. I was slipping off the bar and could not command my arms and legs to grasp onto it. My hand slipped off it, only for a hand to grab my wrist. I blinked, and after a second of fascination, I stared up at Queen Ikoria holding onto me. My limbs were still weak, but I somehow managed to reach out and grasp her arm. A series of crashing sounds blasted around me. Shards of plastic hit my head and rolled off my clothing. Slobber dribbled from my twitching lips. That insidious buzzing ripped into my eardrums. Queen Ikoria pulled me up, and she slid me into her lap as that huge bug screamed its displeasure. My head smacked against the soldier's gun and the close enough metal surface of the bar. Pain ruptured from my forehead to my enthralled ears. I looked up at the flurry of bugs swirling around. A few bugs got shot down from the plasma and laser rays below us. One bug curled up and flew at us. I pushed Ikoria behind me, grabbed the gun, and fired the burning plasma into it. Gunt jumped over us and sliced through the other flying bugs. The huge bug stepped onto the bar and it screeched from its weight. Gunt and the bugs swung at each other in a vicious melee, envious of serious injury. I fired the gun at the bug's leg, which gave Gunt the advantage. He swung his fourth finger and cut the bug's head off. I raised off the ground, and my shoulders lifted when Queen Ikoria laid her hand under my armpit. Queen Ikoria put me down and walked the last stretch. I shouted at Gunt's back, but the chaotic noise of the bugs made my voice pointless. Gunt kept fighting. Bugs were chasing after the queen. I could not lose her now. So I got off the bar and up the staircase to freedom. My breath hung on each crack of my boots on our rise from the depths of inadequacy. The buzzing wings blurred into our bad memories. I cut around the corner, and a suit got thrown into my face. The shock made me reach for it clumsily, and I almost stumbled. Bugs, a horde of them, broken into many pieces with slashed scraps of their thoraxes on the floor. She stood in the center of this mess with a crazed look on her face. Queen Ikoria's maxillas quivered in an excited rattle. You're slow, Cherry. Gunt coughed. I smiled at him as he gasped behind me. We're, we're almost home free. Gunt straightened up. I'll celebrate when I get there. No suit for me, queen. Those mandibles curled up. There's another one inside. I don't need any, so make it quick. And don't slow me down, Verdun. Gunt and I slid on the spacesuits and helmets. My breath stifled with each inhale. But it was going to be brief. Our trek up the prison compound led us at its very top, surrounded by frosty glass. The metal walls became a conduit of the outside's deep trombone. I've never been up here before, but I've never seen so many bugs in my life either. The whole rocky surface of the planet moved, shivered, and broke apart in places where the bugs burst forth like hungry geysers. Queen Ikoria stared out the windows. They love me. They love me not. Oh, there they are. Out of the swirling mist of this cold planet, a huge dropship slowly descended. That was not the only thing that dropped. Cylinders fell from its bottom and into the sea of bugs. A flash of light broke from their center and rolled outward like a crackling current of power. Bugs bent over and shook into an exploding casket of death. Each Avito took out the one next to it 
in a domino of wildfire. This would only slow them down. Queen Ikoria gestured at the exiting door, and Gunt cut into the handle area before pushing it. The wind rushed in and consumed the room. My teeth clattered in fright. I heard the creaking ice forming on the inside of the windows and the equipment. Gunt walked out first. Ikoria followed with me, coming out last. We walked out onto the surrounding roof. Her wings opened as the dropship closed in. So much of my screen was becoming white from the clashing winds dumping onto me. My hand wiped my helmet screen. Gunt cried out. I shuddered as Gunt dropped near the edge of the roof. Queen Ikoria turned to me and held out her hand. Come, Cherry. I froze as streams of red flowed up into the tornado, twisting into the void. Scattered forms of buzzing were swallowed by the whirling winds and cries of death. Gunt's voice groaned into my ears as he doubled over. Don't listen to her. She'll kill you. She narrowed her eyes at Gunt. You talk too much. I should have killed you back here. Her mandibles moved up into a sweet grin. Ah, you should have. But your love for your people became your weakness. Ain't that sad? And you love nothing but yourself. You're only partially right. She fired a spike off her wing, and it hits Gunt in the chest. He fell back and died in a gurgle of blood. The hell you do that for? Her hand raised as if to stop my complaint. At ease, Cherry. Gunt could not be trusted. So I had to get rid of him. You, however, I can trust. Her hand opened out, revealing her bare palm. Queen Ikoria's forearm cracked and opened out like a blooming flower. Tendril-like skin pulled out from the dark depths of her body. Within its grip was a seed. It was rolled into the palm of Queen Ikoria, and those tendrils retracted back to its dark place. I swallowed as she presented the shaking larvae toward me. What the hell that was, I didn't know. But something inside me burned a fierce expression of dread. Come with me, Cherry. Unlike these humans. I recognize good talent when I see it. You can join me, and we can work to destroy everything. Both of us. Destroy everything? She must have been mad, but here we were. I stepped back. She approached. The back of my boot lifted off the roof's edge. I looked behind me. The bugs were consuming their own kind, biting into legs and wings with an incessant desire to advance over their fallen brothers. It was madness. And become mindless like that soldier? No, you'll be given a higher role than a worker. You'll be my admin administrator yes mm, that doesn't that no no that doesn't sound like a good deal to me sound like how do you want it to sound cherry i'm offering you life do you realize what's going to happen to you If you don't come with me, you're going to die. You're going to be eaten by her bugs, devoured to the bone. And for what? Because it doesn't sound nice enough for you? I stared at the fidgeting larva in her hand. 
It looked scared to me. I'd... I'd be nothing more than a slave to you. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm too idealistic, but... But I'm sorry. Peaceful slavery doesn't sound good to me. I'm sorry, Queen Akoria. I'd rather be dead. Respectfully. Her lips parted in a rare pause of uncertainty. Queen Akoria's eyes twitched as if a dust storm raged and she could not handle the search. I didn't stop there. You say you want to save us, but all you want to do is make us servants just like the bugs you used to have control over. We were free before you came and you're not going to subjugate us because that's what you're used to. Her eyes narrowed at me. Every part of me was shaking. That look she gave me was filled with dangerous venom. This might be the thing that kills me. Queens did not take kindly to the word no, especially Queen Akoria. She was used to everybody falling in line and worshipping the ground she walked on, until now. But I didn't let fear shake me from my position. I stared at her unfathomably and undauntedly. Her eyes drifted, and then those eyelids closed in frustration. Thank you, Gabrielle McDonald. Did... wait, did she just thank me? Her eyes opened with more sympathy in their depths. Were they aimed at me? I hope they were. And it was not like I looked up to her. You're right. You're a strong human being. I respect that. Her hand lifted and those thin fingers clenched onto my shoulder. My heart throbbed a warning in my head. And this is why I will honor your request. I didn't even get a chance to react before her hand pushed me back. My boots skated along the floor in dismal grasps as I became weightless. I'll remember your integrity, Gabrielle McDonald. I screamed. My back hits the hornet's nest that exploded around me once they get a whiff of me. Pain ripped through me like withdrawal from a drug. They consumed me as their claws dug into my skin and fangs into my organs. I reached out to the light that soon closed into the darkness of a bug's six-fanged mouth. Hey, sci-fi horror fans. It's Teresa. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And remember, stay cosmic. <laughs>